What is the most foolproof way to get that perfect crispy barbecue chicken skin? From baking powder and cornstarch to pre-boiling and overnight dry brines, we're testing 11 methods to find the best way to get crispy chicken skin every time. Yeah. So for this experiment, I'm gonna prep 11 chicken thighs in 11 different ways and then grill them to see which ones have the crispiest skin. But first, let's talk about what makes chicken skin crispy. So the most important thing is it needs to be dry. If there's too much moisture, we're not gonna get crispy skin. We also need to melt down or render the fat underneath the skin. So we've got cornstarch, baking powder, duck fat, olive oil, a cold air dry, a super hot air blast, and an overnight dry brine, which is just sprinkling them with a little bit of salt to draw moisture to the surface where it can evaporate overnight in the fridge on a wire rack tray. Next, we've got four methods focused on rendering the fat underneath the skin. We're gonna test boiling the chicken in salted water for five to six minutes before putting it on the grill, removing the fat with a knife, which is a technique commonly used in competitions. We're gonna try acupuncture, and lastly, we've got a sous vide to cook the chicken thigh at a lower temperature. But as the chicken won't be in contact with the water, this should render the fat without adding any moisture. So first up, I'm gonna trim and prep all these chicken thighs. I did the dry brine overnight, so I'm gonna get the sous vide going at 70 degrees while I coat all of these chicken thighs and give one of these acupuncture. So this is a technique a bit more commonly done on duck. And the theory is that by poking holes in the skin, we make it a bit easier for that fat underneath the skin to render, come up to the surface and then give us that nice crispy skin. This is our baking powder. Baking powder should just draw out some moisture. We're gonna go cornstarch. I think this one's got a good chance of getting pretty crispy. So next up, I'm gonna air dry this chicken thigh by blowing cold air on it for about 60 seconds. For the super hot air, I'm gonna do that while the chicken thigh is cooking, so there's nothing to do on that one for the moment. Okay, that is very dry. So for this one, I'm gonna try and gently take off some of the skin, keeping it attached at one side, and then we'll cut off any of the excess fat underneath the skin and then reattach the skin afterwards. So I'm just gonna leave the skin attached at that one point. You can see here we've got quite a lot of fat here, so I'm gonna cut that off, and then I'm just gonna scrape bottom of this skin. So this is a technique that's a little bit more commonly used on in, a, in competitions. This is all the fat underneath the skin that when we're cooking we need to render. So I'm gonna reattach that. Just a kind of interesting visual comparison. You can see here the chicken thigh that I took the fat off from under the skin with a knife compared to the one that I poked uh, a hole into. You can just see kind of visually how much difference uh, that makes and how thin this skin now is. And lastly, I'm gonna boil this one in salted water for two minutes, then dunk it in freezing water, and then back boiling for another two minutes, and then back in the freezing water. So the reason we're doing this is that the boiling water should render the fat underneath the skin without cooking it too much, and then the freezing water just slows down the cooking. Okay, so while I wait for the grill to come up to temperature, I'm just gonna hit these with a little bit of dry rub, just give them a little bit of flavor, a little bit of color. So it'll also just help give them a little bit crispier skin as there's a little bit of sugar. Not too much, a little bit of sugar, a bit of salt in this. So we're cooking these indirect at about 200 degrees until we hit an internal temperature around 73 degrees. At that point, we'll move them over to the direct heat and try and give them a final sear to get that really nice crispy skin. So if you're wondering how we know which one's which, we've got a crafty little system going on. I can see the chicken thighs are mostly between 73 and 78 degrees, so I'm gonna move them over to the direct side to give them all a little sear. All right, so we're getting down to the last 10, 15 minutes or so, so I'm gonna give these all a little glaze with the barbecue sauce. The sugars in this will just help to caramelize it and give it a little extra crisp. Okay, so here's the chicken thigh that we're gonna try and dry out by blowing super hot air up with the loof lighter. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. It's something that I know is really effective on pork for getting crackling on pork belly or porchetta. This is 700 degree air. It's insane. I mean, that's definitely crispy. All right, so we've got our 12 thighs, some crispier than others. Time to put them all to the test. Okay, so here we've got our 12 chicken thighs and we had five that got really nice crisp on them. Three that did okay. There is a bit of crisp, but not as much as I'd like. Three that didn't really get very crispy and one that didn't get any crisp at all. So in the last place, thankfully, we've got our control. So what that means is that any of these methods would be better than not doing anything at all. And how I'm kind of judging this is fork test. Just tapping it and you can kind of hear how crispy it is. So these ones we get like a kind of audible crisp when we tap them, whereas these ones, nothing, not much at all. So three that got the least crisp, the acupuncture, that didn't seem to do much at all, basting it with duck fat and the fat trim. Next up, these ones did get a little bit of crisp, but not as much as I'd like. The olive oil, the baking powder, which is surprising, that's one that I thought could have done quite well, and the blasting with super hot air. This was an interesting one because it has 
crisps, but it's more kind of like crackling. It, it more, it sort of popped. The five that got the most crisp on them. In fifth place, we've got the cold air dry. So that was using the hair dryer to give that a dry. Next, we've got the cornstarch. This one got a really nice amount of crisp on it. In third place, we got the pre-boil where we, we boiled the chicken and put it in the freezing water and did that twice. Nice amount of crisp on it. In second place, we've got the sous vide chicken. This got a really nice amount of crisp on it. The one that got the most crisp on it was the dry brine. Hear that. And the obligatory. <laughs> that is absolutely insane. So the dry brine gave us the crispiest chicken skin, but it's worth remembering that all of these methods were crispier than the controlled chicken. So if you do anything, any of these methods, you're gonna get crispier chicken skin than if you don't do anything. It's also worth remembering that you can combine these methods together. You could, for example, use a dry brine as well as duck fat. So if you found this experiment useful, please do subscribe, drop a comment below, I'll reply to all of them. It really helps me improve and helps the channel grow in these early days. If you'd like to watch more, click on the screen and I'll see you in the next experiment.